Hello. In our last lecture, we just had an overview of internet is, what our network is, what is involved. Let's get what it consists of and get into a little more deeper into the structure of the network. Or what do we use internet for? Primarily to communicate, receive information. When we use Google, search it things out. We are making a request to Google and Google gives the answer. That means we are basically sending some information message to Google. Google gives us the message back, but in between lot of things happen. Let's look at how do human communicate. If you want to talk to another person, possibly say hello. Can you tell me the time now, please? Person has a watch. He looks at the watch and he says, hello, it is 10 a.m. now. And then you probably just want to communicate further, get engaged into a conversation. You say, is it 10 a.m.? Isn't it too hot already? It's been too much of a summer. And you probably, the person responds, yeah, it's unusually hot today and so, so forth. And a conversation begins. So essentially what you're doing, you're exchanging messages. When you send a message, you are waiting for the response from the other end. Sometimes you send one or two messages without waiting. Sometimes you keep getting continuous messages and so on and so forth. So essentially, we follow some common rules, some common grounds to exchange. Like in this case, we say, hello, hello is the first word, just indicate, look, I need to communicate. And similarly, other person say hello or no. Anytime you call somebody, in general, first word you use is hello. Indicating, look, are you reachable? Can we talk? Can we do something? So some kind of common rules, understanding how to communicate, how to exchange messages. And that's what basically protocol is. So at a high level, you can look at the protocol as you send one specific message, one or more, and when other end receives your message, he'll take an action and look at the message. Like in this case, A asks for what is time now. Other person, action taken, he looks at the watch, notes the time, and that gives you a response back saying it is 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. or 4 p.m., whatever the time may be. Depending on other, you probably view different actions looking at that, and so on, so forth. So essentially, the protocols enable us, the two entities, to communicate. In fact, you can have protocol between multiple entities, not even one. Now look, humans, we communicate, we said hello. Computers, when you use Google, you send, you send a search request, Google gives you the answer. So what is the similarity between the two? Both involves sending messages. In human case, we say hello. Other ask a question, other person say hello and responds and so on. In even when I'm searching for a Google, for a message, the search for in the computer network course, Google will find out, process it and give the answer back. So both cases, protocol involved, send a message from one end and receiving messages from the other. And when you receive a message, you typically take an action like in the case of Google, Google takes the accent to search in his database and then gives a response. In case of human, we ask your time, looks at the watch. If you ask a shopkeeper, let's say, what is the rate of an apple? He asks the question, he knows what the question is, want to look for the rate of the apple. Then he gives you the rate of the apple rather than rate of the bananas. And so you take an action and communicate back. Now, what happens? When you want to communicate somebody and you don't have common understanding, let's say you talk to a person, you are in a different country, let's say you have gone to Italy and you want to come ask hey, what is time now and you are asking in English and other person knows only Italian, that person doesn't know English, so when you ask what is time now, what does he or she responds with? Probably nobody to English, he says sorry, I don't understand English. 
Yes, you can't communicate. That happens. So that basically means having a common understanding, common rules and regulations is key requirement for a successful exchange of messages. Let's look at another example of a typical protocol that works. It is not necessary that protocol has to be written down clearly. Sometimes it is implicitly assumed. <coughs> Let's consider a classroom. We are studying in a classroom. Now classroom, most of the classes when a classroom teacher enter the class or you go to a conference when somebody enters as a gesture to show respect, you all get up. It's, nobody says that you have to get up. There is no written rule that you are signed in. When you join the college, you never signed a paper saying every time teacher enters the class, I am going to stand up. But this kind of unwritten rule followed universally and you follow up. Similarly, look at another scenario. Teacher is teaching in the class. Let's say as a teacher, I am teaching criminal after class. I am going details, ga ga ga, talking a lot of things. And I probably see some expressions where people don't understand. So students are confused. And then rather than talking, I simply ask, are you confused? Probably a lot of hands. Go to raise, yes, sir. We don't understand what is happening. You are talking too fast or we are not able to hear. Your voice is too feeble. That problem with the bank bench or your ascent is too bad. I think, or sir, topic is too complex. Can you please repeat it? Explain it from the basics rather than at the high level. You are teaching at the MIT Stanford level plus teachers at the basic level and so on and so forth. So essentially, as a teacher, I ask, are you confused? And I do get an answer either by speech or by raising hand saying, yes, we are confused and so on and so forth. So this is all part of protocol. I am asking a question, response coming by raising a hand. And then I probably ask, so what is that you don't understand? Sir, I don't understand what a protocol means. Can you give another example? And then explain again. Or if there are five students who raise a hand, you cannot ask all the five to speak at the same time. You ask one student at a time, tell me your question, then you answer that question. Ask second question, second student to ask a question, and you answer, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and that's how the interaction between teacher and the student goes on. So all we are doing is that <coughs> basically defining what a protocol is. Now similarly look at when you ask when you type a URL in a browser, let's say Google Chrome, what happens? You type a URL, it goes to the respective server, your browser makes a TCP connection using HTTP to the respective server corresponding to the hosting URL. And the web server would exist, you probably get a response web page and you see that. So let's look at the essentially what is saying that anytime you need to communicate, you need to have some well-defined tool to exchange information so that when you send something, other entity be able to understand it, process it, and responds you back, and a series of communication can happen. So last sold exercise. Let's do the following case study. Assume that you are a class teacher and you are assigned to a class of 40 students and your school principal has asked you to elect a class representative. Now your job is to elect a class representative. Now design a protocol to elect the class representative. You can define your own rules, you can find out ways how do you want to elect it? You can probably close your eyes, pick one person without any communication, yes, but that may not be fair. You can ask each student, hey, whom do you want to be class teacher one by one? That will be a lot of time asking 40 people, each one getting an answer, and then you'll be collaborating it, or could there be another way? So exercise for you is design a protocol to elect the class representative and in this protocol when you are able to elect count the total number of messages exchanged that means both sent and received so take a pause pause the video design a protocol verify it works and then see and count 
the total number of messages that are needed. Assuming you have done, so if your answers are following lines, one protocol could be you make a big announcement, send one message which goes to all. So, hey, give me your name. So each one gives a name. You count the number of names and whichever name gets maximum count, you look at the representative. And in case the two names have the same frequency, you can toss a coin or by lottery decide the name. Other protocol could be you ask, go to each student, ask his or her choice, and then mm, you count. Third choice would be you make an announcement. Which are the people who like to become class representative? And then, so first message goes to the entire class. Then two or three or four people, some key number of people raise their hands. You note down their name. And then, so you note down those names. And then you count, let's say five students raise their hands. So you count, note the names of five, five messages. Then for each name, again you ask, do you want this class representative? Raise your hands if you want person A to be class representative. Third message goes, you count the number of hands raised. You repeat for the person B, person C, and that way, so this is a protocol you're designing. So in a way, you understood how a protocol works to achieve a given task. Having understood basics of protocol, let's come back. We started from internet last lecture. Now let's look at what is internet. What does it really consist of? If you look at the diagram, it basically says you have a mobile network, you have a home network, you have a servers where things are, you have ISP, cloud, wherever you look at. And so you can so look at the network at a home, you have a laptop, your phone, your PC, your iPad, in your office or college, you have lab, your number of machines are there, faculty rooms, and probably you have a server set of number of servers are there, connected by your routers. And then both your home and your college institute or office is connected to some ISP. For example, your idea, Airtel, Aircel, Hathaway, City Online, whatever you want to select, look at with. And they're connected to some global ISP. And then there are other people moving in a car, mobile phone, so all different networks. So essentially, network consists of number of devices, which PCs, servers, and the links, which basically connects each other. And then the, the whole internet is consists of num net, uh, number of networks connected together. So mobile network, home network, your office network, your cloud ISP network, so on and so forth. And to be able to use this network, you need to have well-defined protocol. And which in our world will basically be, if we're doing a browsing, we use HTTP protocol. If we are using, let's say, and the protocol would be TCP IP and HTTP. If you are communicating on Skype, you probably Skype is a proprietary protocol. If you are using Wi-Fi, using 802.11b, 11g, 11n, and this kind of protocol to basically do. And all these are defined by the IE task force, Internet Engineering Task Force. And they define, all the protocols are defined, RFC, like IP protocol is RFC 791, TCP is RFC 793, HTTP protocol is 2616, RFC 2616, and so on and so forth. Now, how do you define college in this term? Like we define internet in terms of PCs, servers, end systems, the end systems, and the, the different network connected home network. So take a case exercise, define your college. How do you define your college in terms of the network? So look at the view and so define the following equivalent for the call as nodes, the networks, protocols. So again, pause the video, take your time. 
and try to define college as a network that you need to communicate the what the nodes are what the protocols would be and so on and what is different networks college would consist of assuming you are done if you are thinking on the following lines you as a student are the nodes because you are the one who is exchanging information you are the end user and system like PC, iPad, laptops. Your teachers are probably the servers from where you get the information. Your friend circles become sub network. Your class is one network, another class. So if you add all classes together, it becomes hierarchy of network. And your classroom becomes infrastructure that connects you. And protocol, how do you communicate? You always ask a teacher, sir, professor, ma'am whatever means among friends say hey buddy something of that kind and the protocol is to come in time be in time before the teacher enters or all different kind of rules of engagement do you conduct the exam you do fine things if you're thinking that lines you're on right track let's zoom back and look at what our internet is so we look at the internet as internet as basically means we have number of large systems of computers connected together which are PCs, servers, wireless desktops, laptops. So you look at the PC, server, desktop, smartphones and number of them. So we call all the end systems which are connected to the net network are basically end systems which are your the either consume or produce the information. Look the internet by itself, the ISP do not produce any information. Information is generated, messages are sent by the end user either from device, communicate via the server, but network only communicates and transmits and receives information, but information consumed by the end system. So internet consists of host and systems, which could be home PC or a phone, or the servers. So clients would be your home PC, phone, iPad, laptops, Servers would be the servers like Google server, Facebook server, those machines that give you information. Then there's a data center where you have a number of machines together, which you today also call as a cloud. These data center servers run different apps. Like Google would be running a web server. We looked at that last lecture, Apache, Nginx, Microsoft, Internet Information Server and so forth. They run business applications, the Salesforce application, Facebook as application, photo recognition, all different kind of applications we run them. And in today, internet serves billion of users. More than 50% users use the internet. And the users are basically all different kind of devices, as we already discussed. And today, things are moving to basically IoT devices, sensors, and your what is called wearable devices, your Fitbits, your health devices, your health rings, something of that kind. Look at those, even the TV, entertainment devices, gaming console, everything is connected to the internet. So that's what we do today. But at the same time, these devices to be able to communicate should be able to be connect. That means they need to have connectivity, which is basically called a link. And that is what we call access link or access network. So whether you are a home user or you are an office user, you need to have this access link. Even the cloud server, they need to be connected via the access link. Now access link means like one city to another, you're connected by a road. One colony of city to another colony of the city, you need to access roads. And like roads, there's a limited capacity. Let's say a road is four lane road. That means at a time, only four vehicles can go on the road concurrently in parallel. Or if there's a road is portal road, you can probably say you can drive on this road only at the rate of 10 kilometers an hour. It was a very clean, tarred road with concrete done properly, no barricades, no potholes, no nails, absolutely smooth road. You probably drive 100 kilometers per hour or like nice highway drive 140 kilometers an hour. So bandwidth depends upon how much data could be transmitted. And that is what the communication links are, which we study in the next lecture. And on these links, our data or messages, like search query in the Google, our photo, they're broken into different packets. 
and those packets are transmitted and we'll study what is called packet switching and in the network we certainly would network consist of the routers switches like these are routers switches that enables us to communicate so <coughs> <coughs> This picture, when you say, when you look at our internet in terms of PC, end systems, routers, servers, link infrastructure, but not looking at what internet gives us, but looking at the hardware components of it, this is called nuts and bolts view. So essentially, we're looking only at devices in terms of hardware required, in terms of access link required, in terms of bandwidth required, how much we can communicate. This is called nuts and bolts view. And to understand, let's look at our transportation network. Our transportation network consists of highways, road, crossings, some crossing may have signboard, some monitor, some roads may be tarred roads, some may be concrete road, some may be kacha raw roads or dusty roads, some roads could be pothole, very bad, some roads could be one-way affair, something of that kind. On the roads, we have transport vehicles, basically which travels on the road. And then you look at as a factory want to send some cargo element to the another go down. It basically downloads uh, the segments, multiple packets into one, put into different trucks, and probably from factory to go down, it can get 10 trucks. Trigger is destination, unloading happens, and process goes on. Now, the protocol the trucks have to follow. That to make sure that at the crossing you don't cross a red light, you can go only green light. If there's a speed limit, you don't cross that limit, and so on. So carry all your documentations. You, if truck capacity has 100 tons, you cannot carry more than 100 metric ton. So you follow all the rules and regulations. That's the way it works out. So you follow this way. Similarly, I would suggest you to work out other exercise. Consider the college where you study, and can you describe it? in terms of nuts and bolts you essentially not what college services you what it gives you or what protocol you follow that will study the next lecture but in terms of infrastructure what does college consist of and that will be called nuts and bolts view so take a pause pause the video think about it define it discuss among yourself and then we'll proceed Assuming you are done, if you are thinking in terms of classrooms, classroom having your projectors, your blackboards, your tables and chairs, roads connected, your canteens, your alarm bells, buildings, you have admin building, you have a teaching building, you have the labs, that is what probably would give you nuts and bolts view. So in summary what we studied. We said, look at what is internet consist of, as devices, access links, as devices are end hosts, which are the user end system like PC, laptops, and the server. And we looked at one view of the internet, which we call nuts and bolts view. We look at two other views, which is called protocol view and services view in our next lecture.